Hello, this is Neil from iPaintGirls.com, where you can find more free tutorials. Both links are on my website, or in the description of this video. So I wanted to do something a little different. Um, I wanted to start doing more art critiques, and I feel kind of weird critiquing this particular artist because he's such a good artist. Um, he's actually professional, makes money working for different comic uh, comic companies. On DeviantArt, his name is Art Germ. A R T G E R M. If you want to check out some of his other work, great artist. He has a great sense of anatomy. I don't know if he uses references or not, but if not, just wow, that's really amazing from his mind. Um, great sense of of lighting and stuff for the most part. So he's a great artist, and everything looks good. And you might think, well, what needs to be critiqued in this picture? Well, one thing I've noticed is when any picture where it's supposed to have a lot of depth to it, he seems to not push that depth. Um, as things go in the, in the, further in the distance, they acquire the um, you know the atmosphere and atmosphere usually changes things like to more bluish now of course when things are this close or not really really in the distance they don't change color all that much but one thing you want to do is add some depth make it look like these people are farther away one thing is they shouldn't have as much detail um, because if you want it, you want it to look more artistic the eye if you're focusing here kinda of blurs all this out right in real life like even now if you're just looking right here that your eye naturally blurs that stuff out um, but in in real life when you're um, taking like a camera, a photo or something, if the camera's focused here, this isn't going to be nearly as um, you know focused on. Neither will she. That's if you know your camera's set that way for depth of field. If you have an infinite depth of field camera, then everything looks you know sharp and it's kind of strange. Um, those photographs are going to look quite as artistic. Another thing that's true though is that things in the foreground should have more contrast than things further away. And you can see that's not the case here. This vine seems to have the same amount of contrast as this vine, and as does this vine and this vine, and that shouldn't be the case. Also, you can see she's pretty high contrast, meaning the darks are pretty dark and the lights are pretty light, and she should have more contrast than she is because she's you know, she's much more in the foreground than she is. So to add a, a greater sense of depth, what we're gonna do, I'll just use this tool for now. I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump up the highlights. So I have I'm gonna set this to highlights and we'll just kinda bump up the highlights here. And I don't want to bump it up too much. And I'm almost thinking maybe I should use a different kind of brush for this, but uh So this won't be a true, you know, representation of how I would paint it, but we'll at least get a general idea. Alright, next I'm going to take the shadow tool here. Box it out first. Let's go with, um, back to the dodge tool. I want to try something here. Let's go to shadows. I just want to see if I can pump up some of those just a bit. So I think there should be a little more lighting in some of these places. Okay. Then let's go to uh, midtones. And then we'll go to the burn tool. And we'll go to shadows. Okay, I just want to add a greater sense of All this right here, I would actually, I would color and paint it the color it's supposed to be. So, but you know, I don't have the time to go through and try to paint it all over again because this, you know, brush does kind of blow some things out. But you know, that's okay. You'll, we'll we'll get the general idea, I guess. That's what's important. Okay, so now you can see, even from a great distance, that she has more contrast than her. And um, again, I, I would, you know, alter the colors of things like I would have made this highlight actually, you know, more of a kind of going towards the yellowish, but I would make it really bright. 
I would have really pumped up this whole highlight of the hair to really show that difference in contrast. I would have taken her highlight, her face highlights even. Again, I, I, I like color variation too. Like, um, you know, showing the Because that light is, you know, some of that black light is lighting up some of the stuff, I would actually show that by lighting the edge of some objects here. That one, that, this might not actually receive that strong of a light, but I might. Definitely there though, because that's all right in the in the front of the object, so, and definitely you know along the breast here to get rid of the actual line works all together. Okay, so now she's really popping out more, and that also separates her from that by having the lighter lines. Lighter lines here separates all this from the darker stuff behind her. And it's naturally supposed to be there, so. Okay, now I think he did a pretty good job on how she is different from her. That, that is, at least in contrast. So, if you look, you can tell that she's supposed to be wearing black, I think. And you can see the contrast here is really dark and really bright. Whereas her, it's not really dark and really bright. Um, there's not as much contrast with her. As she goes in the back, she kind of gets dulled. But also, I would kind of dull a little bit of this stuff back here, just to add a little bit of I might even just kind of add a little bit of the like that, just where it's, the sun is more hitting them, you know, a little bit more. And I would definitely want to doll out all this back here. What I want is is detailed nors, sharp. Yeah, I would kind of even though these objects are kind of close, I would still show atmosphere. You know, is changing them. I would take color. And I would just kind of add a little bit of blue. That's a little too much, but I'm trying to add just very little bit of blue here and here to make the darks not like all the same. Make it show the atmosphere. Also, color variation is just good to have, I think. Like that, that way all that stuff back there looks further back. I'd even take maybe a little bit of yellow. Just add a little bit of yellow color variation colors in here. Not much, just a barely a little bit. Like that, and then I'd go to uh, soft light, and I would take this dark, and I would probably start pumping up the darks here a little bit more. This is actually the technique I should have used from the beginning using soft light brush instead of dodge. Works a little bit better. And then I would, you know, take some of this. I don't want to get too dark, but also I noticed like how much detail these it almost looks like she the person drew them very large and then just shrunk them down or this picture is so big that they can add that kind of detail to them and I would probably paint them to where they're not as detailed but since they're further in the background all this right here I'd paint with less detail and so I would like see here take this normal brush you know I would have paint all this with less detail so I want to have been able to see as much of different shapes and stuff And definitely not as much lines and all that kind of stuff. I would have it to where I don't see nearly as much detail. You know, kind of show some of it, but just paint it more. I would kind of go about it a lot more sloppily, which allows you to paint faster. So things that aren't going to be paid attention to as much, you can just kind of get away with, um, you know, not rendering it out as much, not nearly as much as you would you know, something in the foreground where you want all the tension and detail on. And so I would just kinda render it, you know, much faster. So it saves me time. And see it looks cool because it's you know, it there's not as much detail back there, so
just kind of erase a lot of the details. I definitely want it less saturated, you know, more leaning towards grays and purples and stuff. Let the atmosphere kind of take over. So already, I think you can see a greater uh, sense of depth now. Things are popping out more. I would give her a greater sense of depth too by really I'd pop some of this here. I'd get rid of that outline altogether, you know, that dark outline. Replace it with the light outline. I know, like, the line work was originally like that because it's comic y, but you can, you know, the colors can choose to go right over some of the lines. You know, there's no reason why the black lines have to stay there. blend those together. That way she kind of, you know, pops out in front of her for sure, but also kind of just looks like she's where she needs to be, like she's supposed to be there. Maybe, you know, not go so bright, so there's like a color contrast between that background and her. But kind of, you know, get rid of some of that black outline on her legs unless it's supposed to be there but like I would add a little bit of color here I think maybe not down there actually Can't leave that. that looks right notice he cleverly though did put color separation between here and around her hand a little bit even though it's not supposed to be there to show the separation between her and the background this foot is light, and so that there's already a, a separation there, so he doesn't have to worry about doing that. But this here probably kind of blended together, so you had this kind of glow around her. Already the background kind of has that muted look to it, and he did add the, the atmosphere and everything with the blue. But I might even just kind of dull out even more, the background only. Um, oops. A little bit bigger brush for that. I just don't want to go in her head. I would have this on different layers so it would be much easier to work with, you know, if I had the original file. But just doing that with a little bit of atmosphere, I think, really changes the depth and everything and makes it pop out more. Everything pops out more. So let's go ahead and look at it before and after. So here everything looks more flat and not as distant. And here we have, you know, like more realism and distance between everything. One thing I might want to keep though is I like that punch in the hole right there in the sky so I'd probably t bring that back just because I think that looks pretty cool and is actually realistic something that would happen so but maybe even have it more like that like there's more atmosphere and it's more in the distance but it's still punching through but I don't know if I like that blurry look so I'd probably go back well actually all I have to do to fix that is because I saved the original layer is just kind of but still, I wouldn't want as much um, detail as this in here, so I'd probably kind of blur all this out some more. Something like that, maybe. There we go. So there we go. Now we have more, you know, there's more of a shift of contrast and everything. And everything kind of pulls back more in the atmosphere, less detail in the back background stuff. This is all pumped up more in the foreground, so they pop out more. And you can really see a dynamic lighting here. The change in here really changes and really helps, I think, the piece a lot. Helps it pop out more. So not much to critique, uh, but it, there there was some stuff there to critique, and that's what I came up with. Right, so if you um, want me to critique something of yours, uh, please go ahead and send me a PM, you know, and let me, let me uh, send a link to the image and everything. If you just want me to critique it or if you want me to do a paint over too, most likely part of the critique will con will consist of some paint over. So yeah, just go ahead and send some of your work. Let me know what you want to critique and I'll see what I can do. Thank you for watching.